appreciate being here today to speak uh, for behalf of the U.S. Forest Service. Um, I have the honor and privilege of being the district ranger here in Leadville, literally the headwaters of the Arkansas River. We talk a lot about the Arkansas. We also have been talking a lot about Tennessee Creek, which is another headwaters tributary into the Arkansas. And so uh, Brad's discussion actually worked perfectly in the mind. We could have tag teamed this probably back and forth. So I'll just go ahead and get started. We're going to have a lot of things that are common to both. When uh, the U.S. Forest Service, and specifically the Leadville District, looks at water quality, and when I'm thinking about this, uh, I look at it from what mining activities have occurred, uh, there's human cause, or also what mineral deposits we have naturally occurring. Lake County and Chaffee County obviously have mineral-rich areas, and we have actually places where, if you've ever been up the South Fork of Lake Creek that fle uh, feeds into to Twin Lakes, we actually have iron and aluminum deposits right on the surface naturally occurring that brings in sedimentation in the Twin Lakes. Uh, we also look at the soils and geography. Um, when you look at a lot of the maps that Brad had showing risk factors as far as water quality, um, slopes, we're steep. We're the highest district in the country and you know it only goes up from here. We have nine 14 ers on the district so we allow a steep country that um, is a roadblock for a lot of the work that we'd like to do. And then vegetation, and we look at, um, you know, we're talking about row crops all the way down the Arkansas. So the Leadville Ranger District version of a row crop is lodgepole pine in that case. And so when I'm looking at soils and ge geology, uh, one of the maps that Brad showed that we have a high risk factor in the Clear Creek area. Uh, this is actually um, the Cloisy Lake area, if you're familiar with that area. This is uh, on the shoulders of of uh, Missouri Mountain. We had a rainstorm up there two years ago. It rained for about 10 to 20 hours straight and blew down about a six to eight foot high wall of mud down this tributary into toward Clear Creek. So this is above Clear Creek Reservoir. Uh, naturally occurring happens every 15 to 20 years. Nobody was killed in this, but we had 15 vehicles that were stranded above this spot. They were camping at Cloisy Lake. And so this is what the road looked like that day. And so that's obviously things that we're very much concerned with. How we deal with them, we don't know. I mean, this was, I don't know how many thousand cubic yards of material that came off Missouri Mountain. Happens every 10 to 15, 30 years. And so uh, hopefully we don't get anybody killed in this. But obviously you're having deposition going in. So also the slopes. Uh, you're looking up Highway 82 toward Independence Pass. Uh, really limits what we can do there and obviously too the potential of uh, rain events and fires and that on steep slopes obviously that has the potential for a lot of deposition. When you look at Lake County and Northern Chaffee County, that's the Leadville District, we're 306,000 acres. About 70 percent of the acreage in in this area is uh, federally owned and so uh, the majority of that is national forest. And um, when we break it down a little further, even though 70% is national forest, 40% of which is in wilderness areas and another 30% are in inventory roadless areas. That also restricts on what we can do. We allow natural processes to occur in wilderness and right now inventory roadless areas are, are being protected at this time. We're trying to figure out with the Colorado roadless rule what kind of activities can occur in inventory roadless areas. And also too, these are also the areas usually that are our steepest country. Uh, the rest of, the, of this county area is made up with the, the BLM. We have small BLM pieces that are along the Arkansas River and then state property, especially on the Arkansas River, uh, Lake County and Chaffee County and then private lands. Uh, I want to speak mostly on vegetation. Brad's already covered it, but I'm going to hit a little harder locally here. Mother Nature has been kind to Lake County for the time being. We're still, the forests around here are 90 percent or more live. So we're very fortunate. Uh, the mountain pine beetle came down into Eagle County four miles from Tennessee Pass. Nothing would have prevented it as far as vegetation from coming over, but we ended up getting wetter in the mid 2000s to the late 2000s into 2011 and so the trees were able to respond better to the mountain pine beetle. Naturally occurring pest but uh, it, it really did a, a number with everybody uh, north of us. Um, 
We have a very contiguous lodgepole pine forest on this district. We have over 60,000 acres and it's almost all contiguous. It's almost all the same age and it's almost all the same size. It's over mature, somewhere between 100 and 140 years and that goes right back to the mining activity that happened uh, starting in the 1860s, 1870s between, um, you know, the charcoal industry here that they used before coal came in, mine props, building of houses. Leadville was, what, 44,000 people in 1885. All those houses were made out of wood. And so then also there were all kinds of fires that occurred then too. I mean, they were not putting out fires or they didn't have the capacity of putting out fires. So we kind of rebooted Lodgepole Pine, not only in Lake County, but across Colorado and southern Wyoming at that time. So we lost whatever mosaic that we had created, Mother Nature had created before. We ended up now starting, you know, in a 40 year time frame back to zero. So we had a lot of young trees. And also, you know, the Forest Service mission for a long time was to put out all the fires. And it was much easier to do because the weather was not as extreme and the trees were healthier, they were not as dense, and they weren't dead. So it made it much easier to put out fires then. Uh, there were some anomaly years like 1949. Uh, that was a big fire year. But overall, we didn't have near the fire frequency that we do now. Uh, density of trees. During that time, over the 140 years, the street, all of our stands are getting denser. We have not done a lot of management. Everybody said, leave our forests the way they are. We like the way they look right now. It's like, great. Can't promise what they'll look like in 20 or 40 years. So, some of the things I already touched on. Mining activities starting us back. Fires during that period, they were huge. They, you know, they crossed probably continental divide, spotting over in spots. And so we lost our mosaic. So we've got to figure out how to get that back. So this is looking from, actually from Turquoise Lake Dam. This is looking across basically everything to the south. Whoops, sorry. This is uh, Mount Massa, there's Mount Albert. Uh, everything green here up to about 11,000 feet is lodgepole pine and it's almost all the same age and it's almost um, pretty much the same density and then you get spruce fir above that. We're going to focus on lodgepole pine because that's obviously the mountain pine beetle infestations above us have been uh, almost 100% directed to lodgepole pine instead of uh, any spruce in this area. So age and size, again, uh, you can see that very homogeneous timber zones. It's just all the trees look the same. They're, they're really dense and they're all the same height and same age. A lot of our stands are too dense. You can see how dense this is. This is right at Turquoise Lake. And so um, this is prime beetle habitat and this is what a lot of the forests north of us experienced. So what are we concerned about? I'm concerned about this the most uh, from the Forest Service standpoint and also from our community standpoint. This is Shadow Mountain Reservoir if you're up around Grand Lake. This is what it looked like when uh, in their peak when the trees had turned. So these trees had been infested. Uh, this is probably the next year after they actually were killed. And so you can see that's just a sea of red lodgepole pine all the way up to Timberline in a lot of spots. So we're concerned about that. Like I said, Mother Nature has been very kind to us so far that it stopped once it got close to about Camp Hale. We were that, literally that close. The next thing that I'm worried about is increased fuel loadings. As we have trees die, whether it's lodgepole pine, we have the spruce beetle epidemic going to the south of us on the Rio Grande and actually over by Canyon City and the San Carlos district of the San Isabel. We're starting to get fuel starting to get fuels down on the ground now. Uh, lodgepole pine stands for five to ten years after it's dead, then it starts falling over. So uh, this is near Granby, so Grand County, Summit County, Eagle County, all those counties, Jackson, everything north of us will start having a lot of trees falling down and they're saying we're estimating over the next few years 100,000 trees per day falling. So what obviously concerns us the most from a water quality standpoint and also just forest health and also just community health is that this is the Hayman fire. Now it wasn't mountain pine beetle cause, but it obviously was very dry. It was mostly in ponderosa pine. But you get a lot of fuels on the ground like the last thing. You get fires going in there. 
you get long term intensity heat against the ground and so we end up with big fires that take a long time to put out and then they turn a lot of the areas into hydrophobic soils and that's obviously that's the biggest concern that we have is that we go through the cycle we our forests don't regenerate they become unhealthy then we have a lot of fuel loading on the ground then we have some type of event come through like a fire and then it burns so hot that we lose all of the organic matter and all of the plants and everything at the bottom that would normally come up if they were under a more controlled situation. So our desired future condition in this area, it's going to take a long time. It doesn't happen overnight, but one thing is trying to restore a mosaic pattern. It's the first thing we can do, um, but that's going to take series of entries over another hundred years to really truly build the mosaic. Obviously, we need younger age trees. We need more species, not an uh, endless sea of lodgepole pine, trying to help on that, enhance aspen regeneration, planting spruce, planting ponderosa pine, where ponderosa pine grew here historically, but the lodgepole pine have taken them out, Douglas fir where we can, and also to try to keep these stands not so dense, do more thinning, things like that, as young trees and then as they get older too. And less dense stands, if uh, we do it correctly, those trees have a better chance individually of, because they'll have a better chance for water and light and nutrients. And so when, if we do have another beetle infestation, then those trees will have a better chance of survival, do a much better job of protecting themselves and the trees around them than what's happened before. And then obviously mixed ages. So how do we get there? Uh, we have to treat lodgepole pine. And so, um, obviously, we're lucky here. We're hopefully being more proactive than the forest to our northward. They, by the time they got hit, all they could do was react, and they've been mostly into the salvage mode. They maybe cut, they did some thinning, things like that, but the beetles came with such numbers that even the thinning areas didn't really survive. It took out everything. And it was an unprecedented event for the mountain pine beetle. Before, it used to be if there were trees that were less than eight inches in diameter, we considered them beetle proof. Well, they took trees down to two to four inches in diameter. They took anything in, this, in their way. So we have a couple of ways of doing this. We can treat it with fire, resource benefit wildland fire. So if we have a fire starting somewhere up in one of our wilderness areas, we can monitor it and see if the conditions are conducive to doing some new um, restoration of forests in that area. And so then also we have prescribed fire. Um, obviously, that's been a big topic right now, obviously, with the fire that happened over near Denver recently. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough call on the prescribed fire. A lot of the country that we would consider burning won't burn unless we're really, really dry and then it gets really scary and then we're doing prescribed fire on, in conditions that are maybe too dry and so we have to be really careful about that, obviously. And so, and then treatable acres, mechanical treatment, thinning, harvesting, clear cutting, those terms, um, mastication, chipping, anything like that, piling and burning, whatever it will take. So um, here's an idea of what, here's the beginning of a new mosaic. We've got mountain pine beetle killed trees here. We've got salvage areas next to it, but there was an area cut, oh, let's say 20 years ago, and you can see the new lodgepole vegetation coming up in here. So they're starting to create another mosaic there. And this is, um, I think, around the uh, Granby area again. But so, in 20 years, these areas will be green. These trees will now be that much taller. And then they'll start continuing to increase mosaic. There's some mosaic pattern up in here, trying to, to break up this pattern of such dense, killed mountain pine beetle trees. Um, anything also, too, to promote species diversity and Obviously, we love having more aspen, so we hope to treat areas of lodgepole pine near aspen, and hopefully we get some encroachment. Maybe we'll do some prescribed burning. Aspen likes fire. Um, it turns the soil back more toward a basic setup from the nutrients from the ash, and so aspen maybe have a tendency to encroach, spread more. Uh, right now, the lodgepole has been outcompeting it and has been kind of encroaching into the aspen component. Obviously, we need to establish young trees. And so here's some new trees coming up near Turquoise Lake, some small areas that were opened up. 
we have not only lodgepole pine, but we have some spruce that have been planted in there too. So we intentionally went in, planted some spruce, see if we can get not just 100% lodgepole pine back. We're going to get good regeneration back in lodgepole pine across Colorado. And so, because it's naturally regenerating, it has cones that are made to open after fire and such. And so, um, you get those cones on the ground, whether you burn it or, or cut the trees and get those cones on the ground, then they open up and they, they reproduce the trees. And so, but the spruce, we don't have a lot of spruce around here, so we've been actually trying to go in and plant where we think it's a conducive site for mixing in spruce. Also, we've got to reduce the thinning. We've got to do thinning. We've got to reduce the density. These trees um, were thin recently. Hopefully, they were they have a little more water, a little more nutrients, and a little more resiliency to beetles that they came on through. And then here we are, we're getting a mosaic here. Of, here's younger trees. This is up again around turquoise. These trees are about oh, 20 years old, and you've got the overstory next to them. So that's what we hope to make this thing look like after a while. Um, we'll look at prescribed fire as a tool. This was down around Buena Vista. And so it has to be the right conditions. Um, this was under burning for lodgepole pine. It's hard to carry a prescribed fire in lodgepole pine on the ground. Um, usually there are not a lot of fuels underneath, so it's hard to do that to start doing stand replacement lodgepole pine burning. But we may look at that or the opportunities of uh, allowing some natural cause fires in our wilderness areas and things like to, to grow, depending on the climate of that summer when those fires would be going on. And then obviously harvesting. Uh, this is salvage operation, but they removed all the mountain pine beetle killed trees. And so they left residual trees around it. There's still some dead trees in here. Obviously, we're not going to get all those trees. We'll do the best we can. We're limited about what we talked about before, slopes, wilderness, inventory, roadless. We'll try to treat what we can. So right now, we are working on the Tennessee Creek environmental assessment area and it's all the way from Tennessee Pass, the Mount Zion area, down toward Turquoise Lake, along the base of Mount Massive down to uh, Half Moon Creek. It's about 11,700 acres that we consider treatable, that the slopes are conducive, um, soils are conducive for logging, things like that. And I don't know how much we're going to log yet. We're still doing the analysis. We're in the second year of that. And that's where our partnership has come into it. City of Aurora has helped fund us, uh, not only for the implementation once we start laying out units and cutting trees, that Aurora is putting money toward actually the implementation, getting the trees off, but they're also help giving money to us to do our analysis. So we have field crews out there this summer that uh, City of Aurora has actually been helping pay for. And we just had discussions with Pueblo Waterworks last Friday, and uh, it's very encouraging that Pueblo is interested in coming online to help us with this project too, because um, we're going to be treating quite a few acres over the next five to ten years, and so uh, we'll use commercial timber sales, sell as much wood as we can to small, medium, and large um, industry that we have left in the state. And right now we have a more of a small local logging activity here, but uh, we'll sell that. We'll sell as much as we can. And then uh, we also have long-term stewardship programs going on on the front range, and they're interested in coming over this way too. And we could remove a lot of wood that way. And then uh, Aurora and, and possibly Pueblo helping us out with other stands that maybe we can't figure out another way to do them commercially. So thank you very much. That concludes my discussion. Thank you.